It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love, in DNA, you can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popanov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day.